Hello and welcome to Kim's Cozy Corner. I am going to be doing some work outdoors since the weather is nice, which is rare, in Southwest Ohio. We're gonna be doing some outdoor work today, trying to get my raised beds in a little better condition. So we're just gonna clean up and kinda of hang out in the garden today. And I thought I'd bring you with me. I've brought all my plants back outside that I'm hardening off and hopefully this sun and this warm weather will try to nurse these plants back to health. We we're having some problems with these. Traveled for about a week, I was away and they didn't get the love and attention I normally give my plants. So we're gonna have them out here and hopefully this sunlight will perk them up. But let's head over to the garden. In this tower here, I planted pansies. Now pansies are flowers that can deal with some cool weather. I mean, I've seen pansies growing in snow before. And so with the cooler weather we've been having here in the 40s, pansies can handle that. So let me show you how they're doing. They definitely need watering because they haven't been watered in over a week and have been gone. But let me show you how this tower as well as this tower is doing before I jump into the garden. So this tower is 100% filled with pansies. They're violet and white and gorgeous. This warmer weather over the next few days, I think will do this tower some good. And in this tower, it's a mixture of things. There are pansies, strawberries, um, among other things in this tower here. I also have a strawberry green stalk vertical planter, as well as another one right over there. And this time of year, there's so much debris in the air between tree limbs and twigs and little seedlings falling off the trees. There's just a lot falling from the sky that can get in my planters. So this time of the year, I use these covers for all of my planters. Let's see if I can get one of them off. So this is one of the green stalk covers that you can get. And this cover goes right on top of the green stalk. And it keeps trash and debris from getting in your green stalk. Now this cover, you can buy it as an accessory or you can buy it as part of the irrigation kit. I don't use the irrigation kit. I just bought the cover separately and I have them on all my green stalks in spring. And once the season gets rolling and there's not a whole bunch of stuff falling from the trees, I keep them off. But there's a spot right here on the side where I can stick the hose or the tip of my watering can and still water from this top um, area. So I don't water the pockets. I water from the top and these are some nice little covers and I have one for all of my green stalks and I've never talked about it before, but there will be a link in the description below that'll take you to the green stalk website. If you're interested in buying a green stalk or some accessories, you'll be able to find all of those things there along with a $10 discount if you use my code COZY10 on orders of $75 or more. But those are my green stalks. That's not why we're out here today. Today, we're gonna to try to clean this place up. It's a mess, let me show you. Look at all that stuff along the backside of my garage. It's an absolute mess. And that's what we're gonna to try to clean up today. As well as finish filling up these metal raised beds. These are Vigo metal raised beds. And we're gonna to try to finish filling those up with some soil that I have. We still won't get that top, you know, six inches or so of the good quality potty mix. We're just gonna to try to get the level of these beds up. So that's what I'm gonna work on and I'm just gonna bring you with me. And I figured we'll chat while I'm working. All right. 
So I guess the first thing I'm going to do is get this soil out of the rest of these containers and fill the metal raised beds. And y'all, when I say I left a mess, y'all, I left a mess. I got stuff everywhere. So I empty my containers every year, whether we are talking about potatoes or whatever I have in containers, into all of these different trash cans. And then I use them the next year. And so we're going to use this to fill these beds up. So in the bottom of these beds, I have cardboard, I have, you know, old decaying logs, and now I'm using soil to fill up the top, I don't know, maybe half of the bed. And I put a ton of soil in here a few weeks ago, and it's already starting to settle, and I need a ton more. So we are going to fill it up. I also put some leaves in here. Um, I used whatever I had. And all of this soil is potting soil. So it's going to be loose and free flowing. This right here are chives that I've had for three years that I keep moving around <laughs> until it's time to put them in their real home. Chives are perennials. They come back every year. As long as you take care of them, you keep them happy, keep them watered. Unlike how I kept my plants over the last week. <laughs> Now this is a, what, 96 gallon tote, and it's practically empty, but there's a little bit in there. We're gonna get all of that out. I'm gonna try to. This thing's a little hard to handle. I'm not afraid of a little hard work. Oh yeah, that's better. All right, how big is this tote? If that one was 96, this one does not say. Well, it used to say, but it rubbed off, so it doesn't say anymore. Oh, this is a lot of dirt, I'm gonna have to move it. I will bring you back as soon as I have that dirt in these beds. Now, if you're interested in one of these metal raised beds, I have a link in the description below that'll take you to them. These are Vigo metal raised beds. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm liking this. Instead of wooden raised beds, I probably will slowly start moving over into metal raised beds. Metal raised beds, at least the Vigo metal raised beds, have a lifespan of about 20 years, whereas a wood raised bed probably has a lifespan of, if I'm lucky, four or five years. So I think, and when you think about the cost of wood, metal raised bed, I think is the way to go. This soil is so light and fluffy. All I need to do is add a few nutrients back to it. So some fertilizers. And we'll be in shape. All 
All right. I'm going to dig a little bit more because this is a lot heavier than you think it is. And one of the things you have to be careful with is not to bend your metal raised beds by leaning a very heavy trash can over the side of it. So got to be careful of that. Okay, we have these three beds as full as I'm going to fill it for now. And the only thing left to do in these beds is add a layer of um, some good quality potting mix and compost. And these beds are ready to be planted in. That one needs just a little bit more soil, so we'll just make up the difference with more potting soil. So these beds are ready to go. But I still gotta clean up over there. It's a mess. So we'll go over there next. All right, I know it doesn't look like much, but I filled up two bags. I think these are what, 42 gallon trash bags? And I filled up two of those with sweet gum. This is, uh, this right here falls from this tree right here. It's called a sweet gum tree. I call them cuckaburros because they do nothing but stick into your shoes and into the grass. It's so hard to get up, but I swept all of them out of this area right here. I still got to go in between my she shed and the barn and the garage. But this area, I swept it out, but the wind's going to blow and they're going to be right back. But I got all the sweet gum up and I got leaves that have blown into corners and stuff. And I did a halfway decent job, but I'm tired. And so I need to do something else so I can keep this adrenaline going. And so um, I also cleaned up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven beds. I cleaned all the cuckaburls or sweet gum um, seeds out of seven beds. I left the leaves because that'll be my mulch as I'm planting my transplants. I'll take the leaves and go around it. So the leaves need to stay in the beds. But I found one onion that overwintered, well, really two. But by the time I realized I had the second one, I had already damaged it. So I found one onion that was overwintering that I didn't know I was overwintering. So I got that. I took that in the house and um, this bed right here. This is rhubarb and I didn't harvest any of my rhubarb last year because I transplanted it last year and I'll probably harvest rhubarb this year later in the season obviously and we'll have some strawberry rhubarb pie. Other than that I just cleaned up some beds. I tried to sweep as much of the mulch that is ground up into nothing but fine dirt. I tried to organize a little bit I emptied all of my reserved soil, so all of these containers are empty. Y'all, I've been busy, but I'm tired of looking at this, so we're going to go do something else. <laughs> Thought I'd come over here and water my flowers in. I tried to water my flowers in the other day, and the soil was completely frozen. It was a frozen block. And so I'm like, no need to water if it's frozen. But these are pansies. Again, they can take cold weather and they're all alive and they're happy, even though they were frozen a couple of days ago. Got strawberries and pansies here and they need to be watered bad. Oh my goodness, this soil is so dry. To water your green stalks, you water from the top until the water runs out the bottom. And once that happens, I like to go away, come back, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes later and do that same process again. 
because there's a gray tray inside each one of these, right, in between the layers. And when that gray tray is full, the water goes down to the next level and then to the next letter, level, and then it'll, it'll um, wash out the bottom. But one gray tray is not enough to water the tier, so that's why I do it twice. Now, each tier has holes in the bottoms of them as well, so once this tier has all the water it wants, it's going to drip down to the one below it, and that process will follow all the way down. So not only are the gray disc watering, but so are each individual tier. And you can hear the water going through the system. So this tier is full. There's water dripping into each of the pockets. I know there's water in the gray disc. That's dripping into each of the pockets as well. And it all the way down, I see the same thing happening all the way down. So that means every pocket is getting watered. I got one little pansy right here. And it was super windy while I was gone, according to my mother. And when it's super windy, you need to water your green stalk planters more often because it'll suck that moisture right out of it if it's super windy. I had so many extra strawberries. Strawberries might be coming out of my ears before the end of this season. I have two full t uh, towers, two seven tier leaf planters in my green stalks full of strawberries. And this one has strawberries in every other pocket throughout this entire tier as well. So that means there's 21 strawberries in this one. So that's, oh goodness, how many strawberries is that? 104, 100, I have 105 strawberries in my green stalks alone. And I have strawberries in containers. I have strawberries in fire rings. Y'all, I got strawberries everywhere. More strawberry jam and strawberry filling and strawberry syrup and strawberry pies. We are gonna enjoy some strawberries. And I got strawberries on the ground strawberries are everywhere now this particular green stalk planter i grew strawberries in here last year and last year i had five brown tears and i had two of those stone tears over there and it looks like they're coming back and that was the second year for some of these plants so some of these are going on the third year in the green stalk vertical planters so some of these are brand new and some of these are from last year. Now, I have a video where I put these two together um, last week or two weeks ago, if you wanna check that video out. And I did mention that these towers, these vertical planters, I'm trying to get used to saying vertical planters versus towers, but these vertical planters are extremely dry because they didn't get watered while I was gone. So they've been watered the one time before I left and that's it. So they got watered when I put them together and haven't been watered since. So I need to water them in really good. There's still a lot more to clean up, but at least I took a nice break and looking at something that's already done. Okay, I quit. <laughs> I'm tired. Oh goodness. We got all that soil moved. I cleaned up, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the garden in one day. So if I do that four times, I'm done and garden's all ready to go. But I still have my neighbor's garden to uh, get after as well. And um, yeah, I shouldn't be, I should be enjoying this day out here and doing more outside, but I, I'm done. I don't want to anymore. So I'm gonna take these gray disc for my green stalks inside. I'm gonna get those cleaned up and so at least I'm still being productive. Um, I really should get these sweet gum ball cuckerburl things up. Let, look, uh, let me just show you this. When I say those things are everywhere, I mean they're everywhere. The yard is full of them. And if I don't get those up immediately, like before I start cutting the grass, they will get like pushed down into the ground and then they're stuck there. So I need to get all of these cuckoo burls up. Now, 
I know they're really not cuckaburls. These are from a sweet gum tree and I hate them. Why would you plant a tree like this on your property? Knowing you gotta cut grass. I, I don't understand, but I inherited it when I bought the property, so I'm dealing with it. But I should be getting those up. I should have a lawnmower with a mulcher on it where I can pick them up, but I don't even own a lawnmower right now. <laughs> I need to buy a new lawnmower this year and I'll probably buy one with an attachment so I can get that up. But another day, another day, another task. Today's outdoor tasks are over. Thank you for hanging out with me while I'm out here doing a little bit of work in the yard, enjoying the warm weather. And if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I always got some kind of tomfoolery stuff happening on uh, Kim's Cozy Corner. So come and join me, hang out with me as I grow indoors and outdoors and have good plants and bad plants and grow a lot of food and grow no food on things that don't germinate. I show you everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So until next time, and I hope there is a next time that you come hang out with me, Kim, at Kim's Cozy Corner. Bye.